Hey YouTubers, Shaman Hawk here for Shamanic Lodge, still over in Cluj, Napoca, Transylvania, Romania. I want to give you guys something to think about, you know, that might help you when you're asking questions about communicating with nature, getting aligned with nature. And this uh, uh, perception, okay, or something I want you to think about is, we'll start off with the breath of nature, the breath of life. Um, Imagine this, first off, that time is different, you know, for all living creatures. Time is also different for the earth. Uh, time is dictated by two things, the planet you live on and your heartbeat. The planet you live on is like your clock, and your heartbeat is the second hand of your clock. So in other words, in bigger animals with slower heartbeats, time could pass much quicker. You know, where the smaller ones are really fast heartbeats, you know, um, time could take a long uh, time to pass. Um, you know, when we look at kids, you know, it, it, when we're taking these long car trips, it takes forever. And when we get older, it's not such a long trip after all. Well, in the earth, I want you to look at the breath of life being the seasons. Now, in our body, we breathe in, it goes into our nose and mouth, and then it goes down for a proper breath down to the lower part of your midsection and then back up again. If we look at the breath of nature, let's look at it at the seasons. Okay, the summertime, you know, would be the inhale breath. All right, and then the inhale breath as the earth tilts a little bit, it goes into summertime there and in the lower parts so under the equator, and then the exhale, you know, is the winter time. Uh, just think about that, okay? Yeah, you're also going to get into a little bit about the wobble of the Earth, uh, the the different zone between the equator and and uh, above and below. There's not much of a season, you know. There's attitude or out sorry altitudes which govern seasons and so on. But let's try to keep it real simple. Summer is inhale, winter is exhale. And that goes from the upper latitudes north of the equator and also south. Right, again, just picturing the wobble of the earth. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then, if nature really didn't see night and day, all right, it saw twilight. All right. But what? It, and you, your question is, well, what, what about the sun and the moon and the stars and all that? Well, what if? it really saw the sun as just a ring around the sky that that uh, went up and down a little bit depending on the um, rotation or the angles of the earth that, that dictate summer and winter in the northern and southern latitudes. And then the moon would be this other ring that kind of gets a little bit brighter and then a little bit dimmer depending on its phases and that same ring goes up and down you know, in latitudes, depending on the tilt of the Earth. When we look at that, we realize that it's probably impossible for nature, as the bigger consciousness, to really see us, you know, to really notice us as individuals. Much like we really don't know uh, or see the bacterium that's around our body, you know, that, that we need, you know, that creates its own environment on us. Um, but we know it's there. We know when it's getting out of control, when we get rashes and things like that. We see effects of imbalance. Nature sees the effects of imbalance of humanity. All right, it may not see us, all right, but we can get messages from the consciousness of nature to do things. And that's why in shamanism it's very important what we say, just do the pictures. Because what we affect on the earth, nature can see that. Because if we build a structure, if we get a picture to do a, a, a lodge, a circle, a structure, nature sees that and it knows that the communication was complete. And it knows that it has someone, it has part of the humanity consciousness that it can communicate with. Nature loves us, you know, nature loves the people who love nature. And it wants us to survive, you know, Mother Nature is very nurturing, it wants us to survive. 
However, it has no problem with letting the problem children go. What we're going to have here is nature is going to be making some effects. It's really important to get in tune with nature. It's really important to do the pictures that you get. All right, when we look at evolution, it's a beautiful thing. You know, there was a mass consciousness of engineering and architecture, everything from chemical engineering to mechanical engineering to create the new species that who we are today. And things are always evolving, generation after generation. Things can work backwards. You know, we used to think that to have life, you need to be breathing oxygen. But we know when we go down below uh, depths in the sea where there's no light, oxygen is poisonous, and go down deeper, oxygen doesn't exist. There's life forms and volcanic vents in the bottom of the sea that are breathing things that are poisonous here. All right? Nature can change. Nature wants to live and can redefine the engineering and uh, chemistry and physics of life. It's going to do that again. Um, this is a common knowledge, you know, within the global shamanics uh, community. And what we've, what we've been trying to do is get people to reconnect with nature in the very essence of humanity. But instead, they're still more focused on impressing other friends in the hamster wheel. People, you need to really, really get connected because the evolutionary process is going to take another swing. All right, you want to be one of the, I would hope you would want to be within that group that will accept the changes to survive the next phases. The environmentalists, you know, they <laughs> save the planet. Uh, no, it really doesn't work that way. Because the, the planet for a long time was just a, a cloud of hot gas, and then it was a floating ball of lava, and it went through phases. It'll go through more phases. Um, but it's, I don't know how to say it in such a detailed form where people will actually get it. So I wanted to give you that example about the breath of life and breath of nature and the difference of time constants. Take that with you when you go to the forest, when you go to the beach or sit by the lake. Take that with you and really try to assimilate how that vision of time, of the mass consciousness perception, would see life, would see sun, would see the seasons, the breath, and so on. I think that'll really help you. You don't need any ayahuasca mushrooms or anything else to do any of that. You just need to sit there, forget about your cell phone, forget about your job for a little while. It'll be there. Don't worry. But get in contact. Chama Hawk here.